When you watch a movie that's based on a book that you genuinely love, you have a hard time being objective, ob objective about the film. Um, this goes for films like A Clockwork Orange, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. All those films I love, but I do have a hard time being objective while watching the movie because there's this image in my head about the film because I read the book. And the film definitely differentiates from that image, and you have a hard time really getting immersed into it. Now, with a film like A Clockwork Orange, I feel, I feel like the film's strong enough to be on its own. The Grapes of Wrath, as well made as it is, is not one of those movies. Even though it's directed extremely beautifully by John Ford, as he does all the time, I, I don't hate it. Let me get that. Uh, first of all, let me say that in the beginning, I don't hate it. I think it's very, very good. You know, it has a great sense of scenery. It has a great sense of space. It it definitely captures that time very perfectly. Um, whether it's like the empty lands at the beginning, whether it's the, fam the house of the Jode family, whether it's the government camp, or anywhere else they go, it has a great sense of scenery and space. It's well create, coordinated. It's it, it looks great. That's the thing. Whether it's the makeup as well or the clothing, um, the acting is phenomenal. It's probably the main thing that really saves the movie. Um, Henry Fonda is Tom Joad. Perfect. It's I didn't expect Henry Fonda as a Tom Joad type of guy. I I always found him as a really grounded personality who's more somber but here he does kind of ex 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 excurs no that he does show that energetic um somewhat um kind of you know uh delinquent-esque type of acting which i have not seen him in and he's really good especially that last monologue when tom joe leaves the family it's great acting in his purest form. The mother is fucking... Like, I expected the mother to be great. The mother is basically the main character of the book anyways. The mother... The, this actress is fucking amazing. I want to see more of her. I don't know anything she's in outside of this. She's. I don't think she's that famous of an actress. Maybe I'm being an absolute moron saying that, but for now, I just... I've never seen her before. But she's absolutely fucking amazing. Like I said, the, at the there's this one scene that really got like I almost cried. Like this was the one scene where I almost cried. Where it's when Tom Joe leaves and you see him going further away in the background, and the mother looks at Tom Joe, and for the and for the last time she kind of says like he calls her, uh, like she calls her, she calls him, she calls him. And she calls him Tommy, but the way she del delivers that name, you can feel every single bit of motherly love within that delivery. You need to see it to believe it. Like that one delivery, there's not even that much. There's not even much going on. It's not like a extremely tear jerking scene. It the music is sentimental, but it's not like grabbing you by the throat to make you cry. It's just that one delivery that nails that emotional element. It just nails that atmosphere. Like, the acting of this woman is absolutely amazing. The one person that I feel like would be very underrated when it comes to the acting department when people watch this film would be um, the guy who played Casey, the preacher. Well, he's not a preacher no more, no more but, you know, still. Um, this guy, he kind of really relishes in that mysterious, weird, kind of crazy looking guy's type of acting, but there's so much sincerity in it. Like, like he's always kind of wide-eyed, he kind of acts weird, he moves weird, he says weird things. In the book, he's kind of like that too, but here, this guy kind of looks like a murderer. I would not trust this guy in the streets, but there's so much sincerity, there's so much grounded... Huma humanity within his performance that you kind of get into the character anyways 
And, like, that's just a testament to a guy who looks creep. It's just a testament to his acting, considering that he looks fucking creepy. But he feels like a part of the family, you know? Um, and, like, all those things. Filmmaking-wise, it's great. Acting-wise, it's amazing. <sighs> but here's the thing. This novel, the reason I love it, is because it's very detailed. It is an extremely detailed book that really kind of goes into the deeper, more somber moments. Like, some of the stuff that happens in this book is just downright depressing and sad. And they, the film does capture some of those moments very well. Uh, some of them are not in the movie, but understandably so, considering the structure of the film. But the, here's the thing. The, the book, while hopeful at the end, most of the time, it is one of the most depressing things you will ever read. And this film, maybe it's just me, but I feel like it's way too sentimental. Like, I think, yes, family values is another theme of the book. But I feel like the film just takes its sentimentality to another level where it kind of goes away and goes astray from what the book is trying to represent. And considering the uh, the structure and the characters of the film, I feel like John Ford was really trying to capture the book. He was not trying to make his own idea and uh, his own sculpture out of the book. He was trying to represent the book. And if he was doing that, there's some flaws in it. I don't think the film is detailed enough. And I get it. It's a film. But still, like... You need, it's not visual enough for me. It looks pretty, but it's the, it doesn't have that visual detail that the book represents. And I feel like a director like John Ford can do that. But he just makes great scenery. The details are not really there. Um, and structure-wise, again, like, I'm, I'm, I get it. I'm being totally subjective here, but how can I not? I love the book. The movie's still great. The movie's definitely a great film. It is a masterpiece in its own right. It's just that, me personally, I just can't get into it considering the book. Like, I feel like the film lacks the structural, structural perfection of the book. It lacks the detailedness of the book. But it does capture the book at probably at its best in a film format. So... It's kind of hard for me to say that I absolutely hate it. But it's kind of kind of hard for me to say that I love it as well. Um, this is probably the worst review I've ever done. But still, the emotions of the book and the themes of the book are still there. Like I said, that last monologue by Tom with by Tom Joe is still a great scene, and the movie still looks great. So. I say it's a 3.5 out of 4. I really want to love it, but maybe I just love the book way too much to be objective about the whole thing. Maybe if I get older, and if I watch it again, maybe there's going to be something in there that I find to be much more tangible emotionally to the point where I think the film is great. Also, for now, I'm just being a subjective asshole and going to give it a 3.5 out of 4, even though it probably deserves a masterpiece rating if I haven't read the book in the first place. So, yeah. 3.5 out of 4. Grapes of Wrath. Bye.